Aron Sanchez and Daphne Oz are returning to MasterChef Kitchen for a new special MasterChef Junior Home for the Holidays. Welcome to both of you. Daphne, I'm going to start with you. What was home like for you during the holidays when you were growing up? And what memories does that bring back for you? So our home during the holidays never had fewer than 20 to 30 immediate family members. I come from an enormous family, a lot of loud and opinionated people, lots of beautiful cultures and cuisines coming together, Turkish, Irish, Italian, Swedish. So definitely um, the smell of garlic and olive oil as it began to simmer on a gorgeous huge pot of tomato sauce. My grandfather stuffed globe artichokes with an amazing Italian breadcrumb mixture. The trick is to chop up the stem of the artichoke after you after you steam it and throw it in with the breadcrumb stuffing. You will never, you will never go back from there. Um, and honestly, it was a lot of, obviously food came first. That was really where I spent most of my time. My mom, me and my grandma, we were always in the kitchen cooking, but there were games, board games, Oz family football. We're a very competitive bunch. Mm. So we're talking lots of uh, get the energy and aggression out and then lots of eating. <laughs> sounds good. That sounds about right. Right? <laughs> successful fa successful families tend to do that. Honestly, <laughs> you know, like, gotta let off the steam somewhere. It's like a pressure cooker. Totally. Yeah. Around how about you? What was yours like? Yeah, I mean, you know, growing up in New York City, we were exposed to so many different cool cultures. And, you know, everyone thinks, yeah, we're a Mexican-American family. We're going to cook the traditional stuff. And we did that to a certain extent. You know, we did the tamales, which is something super traditional where we get the whole family together. And everybody's, when somebody's forming the tamales, someone's soaking them overnight. What Someone's making the chile or the salsa. Uh, but then my mom really loved, like, prime rib. And Ooh. we would do sort of Anglo-sized elements of our of our holidays, which was awesome. So she does it. She, I remember she used to do this beautiful scalloped potatoes, and then I kind of adapted that and did bacalao saffron scalloped potatoes, and I sort of kind of jazzed it up. And I remember, you know, my mom always being very proud of like taking care of all the principal proteins. And then that one year that I was allowed to actually touch, you know, the turkey or the <laughs> prime rib, I was like, I am an adult. Okay. I, I've arrived. It's a coming of age story. Yeah. I love that. What were the first dishes that you two remember sort of making or perfecting when you were when you were young? I mean, we have a family Christmas cookie recipe that I have four kids now that we make probably 30 batches of a year. Like it's it is it's really simple. It's basically fail proof. Um, and I remember making that all the time as a kid. I feel like the, the recipe I was first trusted to make by myself. It may have been the tomato sauce, actually, because, again, it's like the reason holiday food speaks to us so much is it speaks to all of our senses. So, you know, maybe you're a kid who's not following directions perfectly, but you're remembering from sight, from smell, from the from the you know experience of having your grandmother or your mother like nudge you and remind you to put this little bit or that. And, then, and there's no real measurements, honestly. Everything's a little splash of this, dash of that, and that's how I like to cook now. So it's very fast and loose and ultimately delicious, which is the best part. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think for me, one of the first dishes that I was allowed or kind of I remember elaborating on was, uh, you know, so for Mexicans, Christmas Eve is it. That's the moment. You know what I mean? We no don't do, buena, yeah, no Yeah, no We don't really do Christmas Day. So it's a late night on Christmas Eve, past midnight, and we're opening presents, all that. And then Christmas Day, my mom used to do this charcuterie. So it's like a big pork roast with tons of cabbage and onions and caraway seeds. Something so not Mexican, but so delicious. And to make this pork butt, and that way it stews all day, and then we can just kind of relax and be kind of lazy. Uh, so I remember that. I mean, I thought like a baked brie wheel was fancy and fun. Now I want, I want yeah. beautiful pork. I want it all. It's so good. When's the party? Exactly. <laughs> That's great any day. And getting to this competition, mm -hmm. um, MasterChef Junior, you're both parents. Yep. What is it like? mentoring young cooks like this and what's the balance of giving them the construction criticism that they need and not crushing their spirit and desire to keep learning more how do you how do you balance that well you have to talk to super mom here and <laughs> i'm surprised she didn't come in here in the cape but the uh yeah i mean that's the, you know when we we're in this kitchen before she was pregnant you know that be so she, I, I i leave her to start and then i'll chime in with my little you know Dumb dad stuff. <laughs> no, I know brilliant dad stuff, and you, you know, you're further along in the parenting game than I am. But I, I, I remember my first season of Master Chef Junior. I was really, really pregnant. There were two of me. I it would have to turn sideways, and everyone would have to move over a bit. Um, with our fourth little girl, Gigi, and she, and I have to say, having that experience as my first go at shepherding these kids along mm -hmm. in a moment where they are exploring a huge passion of theirs. I mean, and they're on the main stage 
people forget the pressure on anybody who's under the lights, on, cameras on them, pressures on to win that huge prize. Obviously, all of us up there are getting ready to eat their food and, and they know ultimately have to critique it. The pressure is so high and these kids have shown so much incredible independence, um, poise, confidence. I have to say my the way that I try to guide them and the way that I try to talk to them is of course, as I would want another adult with an expertise to talk to my kids, to make sure that they realize that this is the beginning, hopefully, of a huge culinary journey. There's I think part of what always drew me to being in the culinary field is that your learning never ends. You know, you're always being exposed to new techniques, new cultures and cuisines, new ways of doing things that you thought you've done a hundred times and you knew in like the back of your hand and then you should get shown this one new thing and it changes it forever. So um, certainly my goal is to be as, as much as I can be empowering, um, building them up, making them feel like showing us their personality and showing us their perspective on food is the most important part because I, I think that their being so brave is part of what is so inspiring inspiring to watch as a viewer of MasterChef Junior. Yeah, it's true. I mean, you know, I have an 11 year old, very incorrigible. He's kind of like uh, tweening right now. So he's kind of too cool for school. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's a very interesting age group that, that I'm, uh, you know, age I'm dealing with right now. But the way that I kind of deal with this is, I, you know, I ask questions. I say, do you like the way that that fish looks like now? Instead of me dictating and saying, do this, do that. And that applies to my professional uh, world as well. It's just questions. It's just, okay, look, you could have done better, right? You know, and then when you start to teach like that, people don't close down, the little kids don't shut down because they felt like they've done something bad. So that that's how I approach it. You know, questions, questions. Come on, you can do better, right? You know? You know, do you like it's the so way helpful. that sauce look, you know? Yeah. That kind of way going, I think gets you better results sometimes. It also empowers them to pay attention to their own perspective on yep. what they're doing and to and to really learn, not just to do it to please you, make you happy, but to do it in a way that they actually have then the skill set to go home and replicate it at home. Because we, I mean, these aren't professionally trained chefs, they're eight years old, you know, it's really, honestly, as a, as a mother of an eight-year-old, it blows my mind every single time I see these eight-year-olds out there and you can barely see them over the counter, they're like up there, you know, and it's, and they are fearless. And I think that's part of it, you know, you're used to also mentoring so many of your young chefs in your kitchens. Mm -hmm. These kids aren't held back by what's normal, what's usual. Well, how would you normally pair this flavoring or this food or prepare mm -hmm. this meat? And look, sometimes we get totally insane preparations, but a lot of the time they kind of surprise you with these exotic and uh, and very creative and whimsical com combinations. And it's also like, you know, when kids say prophetic stuff, you know, because it's just like there's no filter and they're just like, what? And that applies to food. So it's just unbridled kind of, unbra you know, brazen ways of looking at things and it, it gets results that are unique and special. And I just want to also touch on the competitiveness of, mm -hmm. of cooking and what that can bring out of people. You know, Aron, the last time I spoke with you, mm -hmm. you said if you went head to head with Gordon in the kitchen, you would kick his ass. Oh, absolutely. And he responded today and he said that he's forgotten more than you've ever learned. Oh, of course. Oh, oh my, and you are I'm starting to try war here. <laughs> if you have, if, if, if we're ever gonna see this, or, or yeah, yeah, what's yeah. your response? What do you, what do you think is gonna happen? <clears throat> Um, one of the things that I've learned about Gordon is, you know, people might find him abrasive at times. Uh, maybe you can question his approach with mentoring and teaching, but I'll tell you what is the most amazing part of him. He has high standards and he cares. So when he's being Gordon, he wants the best out of you. And his approach is, there's no awards for second place. You're either first or you last, baby. You know what I mean? And I totally subscribe to that. Uh, when it comes to the competitive nature of what we do, absolutely. When I compete, I go to win, and I've won a lot. And that's the reason I feel like I can slay Gordon. First off, he's older, he wears tight pants, and he can't move around really quickly. So it's like- You said they were spray on, right? They are spray on the other day. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. yeah you know, and he's, just, you know, he's just gonna call one of the restaurants, he set him a Wellington, all prepared, you know. <clears throat> so I'm like more of a, you know, start, you know, to finish kind of guy. So yeah, da, da, yeah, da. he wouldn't have a chance, but it's all good. Daphne, you said earlier that you're competitive. Do you want to get in on this? Or Hell no. Do you want to <laughs> Hell to the no. no, no. I, um, you know what? Actually, this would be the only thing I would throw down with would be some chocolate chip cookies because I yep. will claim the number one recipe in the in the world right here. No, honestly, you know, all joking aside, I, my, I am deeply competitive and I 100% agree with you. And maybe this is our toxic trait that like if you go to win, you better be number one. Mm -hmm. But I... Um, I, I think both of these fine gentlemen, fine young chefs, 
have forgotten more than I've ever learned. And I think that's good because to me, I never want to stop learning. I'm thrilled every single time they drop their little nuggets of like, well, when I was making it this way in 1947, like this mm -hmm. is what I did, you know? The... Yeah. You know, Gordon's so old, he, he wrote his first tasting menu in Papyrus. <laughs> oh, papyrus and, scrolls. Papyrus scrolls. <laughs> He actually, he actually chiseled his first menu. It was awesome. Anyway. No. Well, it all depends on the judge, you know? Yeah. If, if, I make you know, a mean chicken finger. Yeah. Quesadilla. If, all the, if kids. the MasterChef Junior kids are, are the judges, your, your chocolate chip cookies might come off uh, on top. You know, I play, I play unfair if I have to. I'll go straight to the sugar and the butter. Don't worry about yeah. it. But I want to say, look, one of the best things that we, we can take away from uh, MasterChef Junior, and I can, you know, I can hopefully speak a little bit for, for Miss Daphne, but... If kids are cooking at this high level right now and their interest level is so big with food, mm -hmm. we're going in the right direction. Mm -hmm. And that is what's really promising. You know, as parents, as people in this industry, you know, people are into it. The kids are into it. And that's a great thing. It's also, mm -hmm. cooking's a life skill. It's a way to feel confident every single day in your kitchen. It's a way to feel experimental and adventurous. I mean, I think there's a lot of adults who are terrified to get in the kitchen because they're holding themselves up to this you know, the, the Gordon Ramsay standard of, you know, do or bust. And I think that the reality is you get in there and you make a mess and the worst thing you do is order pizza. Like it is a totally liberating space. And I do think that genuinely when we have to give tough criticism and it is the hardest part of this job, there's not a lot of hard parts of this job. This job is incredible in almost every way. The one hard part is having to tell a kid that they just aren't going to make it to the next round. And it is heartbreaking. Mm. But in that moment, you watch this switch flip. You watch in their eyes as the kids realize, and this is with the encouraging words of everybody up on the stage telling them, going through disappointing moments, going through hard moments, that is what's going to temper you to be able to succeed in the next hard thing. And you see them start to grow this grit and start to grow this excitement of their own performance and their confidence in themselves. Um, and that to me is such an incredible gift to give a young child who's, ex who's playing. This is play for them, you know, at this point in their, in their early careers. Yeah, you're right. Every obstacle creates opportunity. Mm -hmm. And I think the kids mm -hmm. should keep that in mind. Thank you. We're certainly looking forward to MasterChef Junior, home for the holidays. Daphne, Aron, thanks for taking time. Thank and you. You're welcome, so brother. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.